Hi, my name is Gavin Givanoni. I'm the Professor of Neurology at Barts in the London, and I spend most of my time studying multiple sclerosis. Why lumbar punctures may be important for MSs with progressive MS is a theme close to my heart. A great unmet need is finding a treatment for people with progressive MS. This slide represents our current trial design to prove a therapy works for MS. We need to take approximately 600 people with MS and randomize them by flipping a coin to either receiving a placebo or an active tablet. We then have to follow them up for three years to assess the impact of that treatment on disability progression. In other words, is there a difference between people on active therapy versus placebo? Hopefully we'll get a positive result and show that people on the active treatment do better over three years than those on placebo. This particular graph gives you the impression that it takes three years to do a clinical trial. That is incorrect. A typical trial takes about seven years. It takes us about two years to recruit 600 people with the disease. We then have to follow them up for another three years because the last patient in has to be followed up for three years. It then takes us about a year to clean up the database, analyze the data, and present the data at scientific meetings. Prepare the uh, preparation of the report for submission to the regulatory authorities, the FDA in the United States and the European Medicines Agency in Europe, takes another year at least. So it takes about seven years to do a study of a potential neuroprotective drug in MS. And in my opinion, this is far too long in the uh, period of time in the life of a person with MS. Now the gorilla. Please look at this picture. Remember that you've seen a gorilla. It may become relevant later on in the program. Now how does lumbar punctures help us? You're probably aware that uh, lumbar punctures are commonly done in people with multiple sclerosis to help make the diagnosis. What I'm proposing to do is to use lumbar punctures as part of a clinical trial. Now this is a cartoon of a nerve cell and in multiple sclerosis, the myelin sheath, the insulation, is stripped off by the inflammatory or the inflammation that occurs in the disease. This exposes the uh, axon, the nerve extension, and we believe that nerve becomes vulnerable to degenerate. And as it degenerates, it releases its contents, and yeah, these little black dots represent the scaffolding protein neurofilament, which keeps the axon rigid. As the cell dies, more and more neurofilaments are released, and the nerve cell dies. Now what's important is by measuring the amount of neurofilaments released, we can get an idea of how many nerve cells are being damaged or dying. In other words, it's a way of measuring the degeneration that occurs in MS. And I'd like to uh, bang our drums, and I'd like you to remember the drums. And this is a study that was uh, performed by Axel Petzold as part of his PhD in collaboration with the MS group in Amsterdam under Chris Polman. A group of MSs were encouraged to have uh, lumbar punctures and we could measure the amount of neurofilament in their spinal fluid. And on the y-axis is the level of neurofilament and on the x-axis is the disability progression measured using the disability score called the EDSS. And as you can see, there are two groups of uh, MSs here. Ones that have raised levels in the red oval and ones that have normal or low levels in the green oval. And it's clear from our study that those with raised levels were much more likely to progress, in other words, become more disabled over the next three years than those with levels in the green box. So this is kind of a proof of principle that neurofilaments are a prognostic mark, in other words, they predict who is going to progress over the next three years. Now this is a study done by uh, Jan Lick's group in Gothenburg using spinal fluid neurofilament levels in people treated with the drug Natasabri. In the green box here are the, spine, the neurofilament levels in the spinal fluid of healthy control subjects and you can see they are low. Left here are these neurofilament levels in people with active multiple sclerosis prior to going on to natalizumab. 
So these are people with active disease, and you can see their levels are very high. In other words, there's ongoing damage to the nerves in their spinal cord. Twelve months after receiving natalizumab, the levels are normalized. They're almost equivalent to people to healthy controls. This is telling us that an effective therapy like natalizumab is able to normalize or protect nerves from becoming damaged. Now this result is not surprising because natalizumab is an effective MS therapy. In highly active relapsing MS, it reduces the relapse rate by over 80%, disease progression by about 65%, and about 30 to 40% of people who go on to this drug actually find their disability levels improve. So we have an effective therapy. We would expect it to do this. And this is very, very important. Can we use this now to measure or to assess drugs that are neuroprotective? I therefore would like to propose this study, and we've done the calculations and know exactly how many patients we will need to do this study, and we would need only 60 people with MS, this is progressive MS, to participate in this study. And we would flip a coin and randomize them to two groups, again the placebo tablet and the active tablet, and we'd need to follow them up for two six-month periods to do the study. And the way we would assess the effectiveness of these compounds is by doing lumbar punctures at baseline, 6 months and at 12 months. And if the therapy was effective at protecting damaged nerves from dying, it should reduce the neurofilament levels compared to the dummy drug. I'd like you to note that this study only takes 2 years to complete. So if you compare the two trial designs at the moment, the current one takes 600 MSs, followed for 7 years, to do the study, and we're proposing doing a proof of concept study with 60 MSs for two years. So if people with progressive MS were prepared to have three lumbar punctures as part of a clinical study, we could test 10 times as many drugs in a third of the time as we do right now with one drug. And this is why this study is such an important study to do. Now one of the problems people with MS have is they've had lumbar punctures in the past and a lot of them have had very bad experiences. Either painful procedures or they've developed headaches after lumbar puncture. And the question is, can we make lumbar puncture safer? And the answer is yes. Previously we used to use a needle called the quinky needle. And this was a traumatic needle with a very sharp edge that used to cut through the fibers of the membranes around the spinal fluid. And that used to leave a hole that didn't heal or seal very quickly, and there was a high incidence of lumbar puncture, oh, lumbar puncture headaches. Approximately 1 in 10 people will develop a headache after that. A more recent innovation is the so-called atraumatic or sprotte needle. It's got a blunt edge, and it separates the fibers of that lining very well. And this reduces the incidence, or the, the headache incidence, by uh, several orders of magnitude, and less than 3% of people now develop headaches. So we would propose not doing the lumbar punctures with the cutting needle, but with the non-cutting needle. Another innovation is using ultrasound or sonar to guide the lumbar puncture. One of the things that causes pain is if you put the needle in and hits the bony tissue. Ideally, you would like to put the needle between the two vertebral processes without touching bone to get the fluid off. And the ultrasound guidance, a very simple device over the back, tells you exactly how, what angle to put the needle in. And this picture here on the upper right shows you the white arrows picking up the bone, and you can see in between the bone the area where the needle has to pass through. So we would propose not only using uh, a better needle, but also using an ultrasound device to make sure we did not cause any pain. So the question then is, would you, as a person with multiple sclerosis, and progressive disease, be prepared to have three lumbar punctures to help find an effective treatment for progressive MS. I'm not necessarily talking about a treatment that's going to cure your disease, but the treatments we're thinking about are those that may stop or slow down the progressive phase of the illness. Now, to answer this uh, question, I'd appreciate it if you could log into our research blog, www.multiple-sclerosis-research.org to answer a short questionnaire on this issue. The work we presented and the concepts surrounding this new trial design were done as part of our research project that was funded under the Promise 2010 program 
uh, by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society of the United States and the Multiple Sclerosis Society of, of Great Britain. And I'd like to thank them both for giving us the opportunity to do this research. Finally, I'd like to finish off with the gorilla playing drums. Have you ever seen a gorilla play drums? If not, I would uh, recommend it. Thank you uh, very much.